Hi, my name is Tomasz and you're watching Casual DIY channel. In today's video, we're going to be tuning up a bandsaw and changing the blade as well. We'll also talk about which blades are best for what type of work. Check out the video. So what I'm going to be covering in this video? Well, to start with, we'll quickly talk about some different types of blades and what are they used for. Then we're going to take off the blade I already got installed in my bandsaw and we'll install a new blade. And as the process of changing the blade will go on, we'll be adjusting and fine tuning the uh, saw itself, which will lead us to a bandsaw that is cutting to its best abilities. But let's have a look at the blades. Now the blades a bandsaw can take depends on the specification of your tool itself. In my case, for my particular bandsaw, which is the Charn would be 250, the blade needs to be 1,826 millimeters long, and the width of the blade can be between 6 millimeters to 12 millimeters. Now today I'm actually going to be putting this blade on. So the width of this particular blade is 6.35 millimeter and it does have 6 TPI. Uh, the blade I'm currently uh, got on my bandsaw is 12 millimeters wide and it also has got 6 TPI. So you definitely need to check out what type of uh, blade your machine can tackle. The width of your blade, that actually is quite important. Now the narrower uh, the blade itself, you'll be able to make um, stronger curves, making circles and all that. So that's where the blades with small width come in really handy. Whereas the blades that are wider, they will be absolutely perfect for re-sawing material and cutting straight lines. And lastly, TPI, so it's the number of uh, teeth per inch. And the rule with this is very similar to any other blades, for example, the blade in your table. So if you've got one, the more teeth, the finer the finish. And if you've got less teeth, the more coarse the blade will be. So uh, the less teeth, uh, it, the better it will be for resawing, rough cutting um, boards and any lumber. Whereas if the blade has more teeth, higher TPI, um, the finish on it will be far, far better. So if you want to break down wider boards or thicker boards, it's best to have a lower TPI blade as the dust uh, particles from the wood will not clog up the blade. Um, and if you had a higher TPI blade, for example, let's go for 10 TPI, then there's a good Good chance if you're cutting through a thick material that the dust will clog up uh, the blade itself as the space between the blades is really really minimal in that case and it's you know you're going to cause some burnout on the wood and on the blade itself so uh, that is the difference between them. Now if you're starting your adventure with a bandsaw I would always suggest to go somewhere in the middle of the specs and the middle blade will be able to tackle, you know, making some curves, making circles, but also it will be able to tackle uh, to a certain degree, recutting, resawing, uh, straight cuts as well. So it's uh, not the perfect uh, blade for all the scenarios. However, you'll be able to tackle most of the jobs around your workshop. So in that case, obviously the width of the blade will be somewhere in the middle of the range that your saw has got. So in my case, for example, I've got between six and uh, 12 millimeters. So if I go for eight millimeter blade, that would be more or less in the middle. And with the TPI, um, so if it had three TPI, that's a very coarse blade. 10 TPI is a very fine blade. So go somewhere in the middle, let's say six TPI uh, would be just fine uh, for most of the applications. Right, so with the blades out of the way, uh, the first job over here is to remove the old blade. Obviously make sure your machine is unplugged from <laughs> electricity so you don't make any damage to your hands. Now the process of removing and installing the blade from bandsaw to bandsaw could be slightly different. However, you'll get a general picture of the steps that you need to follow. 
So let's open the compartments of the wheels at the top and at the bottom. As you can see, uh, the tension of the blade is there. So we need to release the tension. In my case, it's a knob at the top of the machine here. The next thing we need to do is to remove the uh, clearing plate. And in my particular case, I've got a groove in my table at the front here. And therefore, I can remove the blade pulling it through like so. However, I need to remove uh, this straight edge here. Uh, that's my locking edge for uh, the fence I've got for this tool. So I need to remove that first. Now, as you can see, I've got access to my blade uh, from the table side. Now, I also need to uh, move the blade guard I've got on my machine. At the moment, it's too high and I wouldn't be able to actually take the blade off. So I'm just going to place it in a position where it will be easier for me to take the blade out. And now the last step before you start pulling the blade out is to move away um, the bearings that are guiding the blade itself so they are not in the way and each time you are changing the blade you really need to set them up accordingly for each individual blade. So uh, the bearings would be in a different position for a blade that's six millimeter wide and obviously different for a blade that's 10 millimeter wide, just as an example. So it's best practice to move the bearings away from the blade as you are changing it. Remember, the bearings are located at the top, just over here, and underneath the table. Now, for this process, it's best to use some gloves so you don't cut your fingers. As you can see, I've got a gap just over here um, in the, where the pillar of the machine is, and that's where the blade will go. We can release even more pressure. It, it is a bit of a wiggly job. And there you go, the blade is out. Now the best method to fold the blade away into a smaller capacity is to use one of my feet like so just like that and that's now ready to be stored how about the new one well, I'm going to unsecure it first. Now, you need to be very careful with them. Obviously, they will have sharp teeth, hence the gloves themselves. And there's a couple of things you can do. You can just throw them on the floor, making sure that the teeth are facing upwards. Preferably, the floor would be something softer, not just concrete, so you don't damage it. However, you can if the bandsaw blade is relatively small, uh, you can hold it in your hands. Uh, watch out for your eyes, obviously. Uh, but yeah, just like that. It's much easier with a smaller blade. Now it's time to install the blade back in. So it's a bit of a wiggly job to get it back in place on those wheels. Now, as you're installing the blade, you need to make sure that the teeth of the blade are facing down as that is the direction how the saw is operating, okay? So that's very important to make sure the teeth are facing down. Now it's time to add the correct tension to the blade itself. We don't check that at the throat over here as depending where you're gonna push the blade, how high, it will give you different results. Plus, if you've got the bearings engaged, again, it will um, vary with uh, how it will flex on uh, different um, heights of the blade. So instead, I would suggest checking the tension of the blade where the pillar is 
at the top of the wheel here, just at this point over here. Now, sometimes you will have some tension indicators in your machines, I don't. And how I go about this is, if the blade can flex by about five millimeters, while well, I don't push too much pressure, it's like pressing a button or, or something like that. Um, so at the moment, um, I can push it way too much, so I'm gonna add some tension to it. And I'm just gonna keep on trying this until I get the correct tension. And now we need to make sure that the blade itself is properly positioned on those wheels. And to do that, we need to place the deepest part of the gullet in the middle of those wheels. And what I mean by the gullet is just this part here of the blade. So we need to make sure that this part of the blade is in the middle of the wheels. So you can adjust the wheels with this knob over here. What it does, it will shift the top wheel um, like so. Uh, I've got the locking mechanism here. And then as I'm spinning um, the wheels, I can shift the position of the top wheel uh, making sure that the blade is in the right position. So let's do that now. So as I said, I'm aiming for the gullet here to be in the middle of the wheel. Now I think I'm more or less there now. Just gonna make a few quick spins to make sure that the blade is stable on the wheels and it's not moving um, forward or back. In my case, it's looking um, fine. So I'm gonna lock the setup by the uh, locking knob at the back so it doesn't shift on me. Try it again, spin it, making sure it's not moving on you. And now it's time to sort out the bearings at the top and at the bottom. I'm gonna show you more or less how I do it the, with the ones at the top and it's the same thing for the ones at the bottom. So as I mentioned before, I've got a um, setup of three bearings at the top and at the bottom, same thing, okay? We've got two on either side of the blade and one is at the back of the blade, preventing the blade going too far back and the ones on the side preventing it to go too much to the left or to the right. Now, uh, how do you need to set this up? The bearings need to be as close as possible to the blade. However, as you spin the wheel, they cannot be touching the blade itself. They're there to help where the friction and the forces are on the blade, but as the blade is running on its own, they cannot be engaged. So it is a bit of a trial and error thing. Um, you just try to put those bearings as close as possible, but make sure they do not touch. And depending on what setup you've got on your particular bandsaw, and uh, that's how you need to do it. In my case, uh, I've got two uh, star knobs over here, so that will allow me to uh, push the whole contraption with the bearings forward or back, and that's for the bearing at the back of the machine. And to adjust the side bearings, I've got a Allen key, and the fixtures are on the back of this, so I just need to loosen them a bit so I can slide them to the right position. Now the side bearings, they need to be positioned um, just below the level of the teeth. If obviously you're gonna put the bearings at the sides of the teeth, um, what you're gonna do, you're gonna destroy the blade and the bearings as well. So make sure that the bearings are located just below uh, the level of the teeth themselves. Now I'm gonna take care of the bearing that's at the back. And for that, I'm gonna be using the star knob that's at the other side. So again, I need to move it as close as possible um, to the blade itself, making sure it's actually not touching the blade. And now we're gonna take care of the uh, sides bearings. Again, I've got the fixture at the back to sort that out. So they need to be as close as possible to the blade but not touching it. Now 
Run the wheel constantly for a few moments to see if there's any movement of the, on the bearings themselves just to make sure uh, that they are in the right position. As uh, you know, the blade itself is definitely not always perfect and even if the bearing touches it um, after a few spins you just need to adjust the bearing so it's not doing that. With the top bearings now sorted, I'm going to do exactly the same with the ones at the bottom. Okay, so the bottom bearings are now sorted as well. Now don't get discouraged, it really takes sometimes a long time to make sure all the bearings are in the right positions. It all depends um, on how um, your banzo is built, how it's all set up. Mine, it's a pain in the bum to be absolutely honest with you. It's fairly difficult to set up uh, the bearings here and you really have to do it each time you do change the blade. There's really no way of escaping that uh, if you want to have nice quality cuts and the machine running correctly. Okay so I've put back the fence, I've closed the compartments, I've still left out the clearing plate as I'm going to turn on the machine and I'm going to have a look if the blade is touching any of the bearings now. Now after a minute or so if I notice any of the bearings spinning on the blade obviously I need to adjust that. Everything seems fine, no movement on the bearings so I'm putting the clearing plate back in. And for me, the final check, the final setup for a bandsaw is to make sure uh, that the blade is square to the table itself. I do have a positive stop for 90 degrees uh, to the blade, uh, but you never know, as I move around the tool, it may have shifted and uh, the table may have uh, gone out of squareness. So uh, just pick up a square, make sure you place it um, in a way that's not on the teeth as they, as they do go like that, like any of the table saws uh, blades as well. So make sure uh, to put your square against the gullet, not touching the uh, teeth. Right, let's have a look. That's absolutely perfect. Check it from the other side as well. I'm going to turn on the light just to see if there's any light between the um, square and the blade as there's absolutely nothing. Make sure not to push too hard on the blade as you know it will flex so just place it like that. Yeah that's absolutely spot on. Okay now I'm going to do a cut test to make sure everything is 100% square so a the widest board you can get um, on your table, lower the guard and what we're going to do, we're going to make a cut into the board about one centimetre um, inside of the board and then we'll take it from round the back like so and if the blade fits in the hole that we just made with the blade that means everything's nice and square. Um, if, for example, the table wasn't, the, the blade will not fit correctly and you'll be able to see uh, which side is out of squareness. So that's the hole made by the blade and let's check it out if it will match it. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now as you have seen it is a fairly lengthy process to change a blade on a bandsaw hence it's best not to do it too often. So if you're a beginner DIY, a beginner woodworker you know it's always best to put a blade that's more or less in the middle of your needs as I um, said before in this video. As missing any of the steps I mentioned in this video Unfortunately, it will lead to a bad operating machine and you will have really poor results. 
Now I hope this video was informative to you and if it was drop me that like button down below and if you're not a subscriber please consider subscribing to my channel as I will be bringing more content in the future with operating some basic tools in the workshop tuning them up and everything like that so you definitely don't want to miss that if you are starting your adventure in DIYing or woodworking but for today guys that's it thank you for your time thank you for watching take care